Hey, how you guys doing today? It is Ken, the classy gentleman, and still trying to find a rough outline for the channel, but uh, what I do want to do is comment on things happening in the world, happening in uh, social media that um, I think are relevant to sort of pop culture. Uh, the idea of the channel, just before I jump into today's topic, is... Uh, conceptually is to um, just to provide an insight on uh, my perspective on many different things and that could be things like reviews that could be things like uh, UFC fights that could be dating tips for guys like there's so many things that uh, I think I'm going to jump into and sometimes it's best to try to niche down uh, and I plan on niching down but uh, we're gonna figure out what way we're gonna go anyways the topic of today's video, Conor McGregor. Now, I've been an avid UFC fan for a very long time. And Conor McGregor is a polarizing individual. If you don't know who Conor McGregor is, just YouTube, Conor McGregor, and you will find um, the evolution of somebody who came into the UFC at a very young age and... I don't actually know if he was super young, but he came in at a younger age and fought his way through uh, the featherweight division and ultimately became the two-time champion, winning the lightweight uh, belt as well. Connor has turned the industry of business in fighting and sports in fighting really on its head specifically in the UFC the UFC is a one conglomerate uh, business what does that mean there are Bellator there's um, one FC there's a few other operations but if you can picture the UFC being the NFL and then um, all of these other promotions being the CFL, um, XFL when it's around, you know, smaller promotions where there is a fan base and there are some great players, but it's just not the NFL. So Connor comes in and wants to chart his own path, wants to create uh, really something of a unicorn the only person that I would say that has had any major success prior to Conor McGregor in a monetary standpoint from the UFC would be the likes of a George St. Pierre um, and I'm trying to think of, of anybody else that would have made multi millions of dollars specifically from fighting not their sponsorship specifically from fighting George St. Pierre, and even long into his career, wasn't making a million dollars a fight. Um, now, you got to understand, the UFC is about 20, 25 years, 20, 25 years old, and it was bought from the Fertitta brothers uh, with Dana White, and they, they bought it. They were, at one point, up to 40, 50, 60 million dollars in the hole uh, before they brought it back to where it is today and ended up selling it. So, where does Conor McGregor fit in all this, and what about his fight? Uh, last night so Connor has if anybody fighting or anybody that has a platform such as the UFC promoting them Connor McGregor is whether you love the guy or hate the guy doing business as you should if you are a fighter and now there are other people in the promotion someone who fought on the card last night, Sean O'Malley, who is kind of following a little bit in his footsteps. But Connor is in a league of his own. And there's really one reason why. And it's not necessarily his fighting, it's his mouth and his brain, obviously. But Connor talked his way into, he manifested something that really nobody else in sports has really ever done in terms of a money standpoint. Floyd Mayweather, who he is often compared to, 
did it in a similar but different way. Similar in the sense of he really um, drew eyeballs, but in a different way because everybody wanted to see him lose. Nobody wanted to see Floyd Mayweather win. Floyd, by all accounts, while being um, up there with the greatest boxers of all time, and I think that's extremely subjective because it depends on what era, it depends on who they fought, depends on how they've won, if they've lost. Uh, there's so many ways you can define the best of something, right? But Floyd, nobody wanted to see win. And so people would buy tickets and pay-per-views to try and, and, and see if this guy who's claimed to be the next you know, Floyd killer could come in and, and take him out. Connor on the opposite. and and. Just to touch on that a little bit more, Mike Tyson, um, prior to Floyd, would be the alter ego in the sense of everybody wanted to see Mike Tyson just destroy people. And many times, like 20 seconds or 30 seconds into a $50 pay-per-view or $40 pay-per-view, it's over, right? And with boxing, there there's not the undercard that the UFC puts on. And I think a lot of people fail to understand the UFC pays their fighters about 20% of total revenue. In most major sports, it's a pretty equal split between the players and the league, the owners. <clears throat> but... The UFC, unlike the rest of the professional sports, actively promotes the players. There's a there's a platform given to any individual that wants to take it. Most don't. Most aren't people. People. <laughs> they don't like people. Um, okay, so coming all the way back to Conor. Conor McGregor is at a crossroads. And... and was at a crossroads, still is at a crossroads. Connor rose very quickly through the featherweight division and through uh, going into the lightweight division. And when a lot of people thought that Eddie Alvarez, um, who Connor beat to get the lightweight championship, um, they thought, I think a lot of people thought Connor could win, and a lot of people thought that this could be a big test for Connor. And Connor decisively picked apart Eddie Alvarez, like dominated him. And um, became the two-time champion in the UFC. Something that hadn't been done with an active champion in, in two, uh, two different divisions. Fast forward again to yesterday and Connor having a rubber match with Dustin Poirier and it's actually a trilogy fight one and one this is for kind of all the marbles how they sold it Connor loses last night if he loses decisively Connor's career as a, U as a UFC fighter is over and he knows it Dana White knows it uh, I think if you're any kind of active fan of the UFC you know that Connor is not the type of guy where he is from a money standpoint to come back and fight, you know, a fifth, an eighth, a tenth ranked opponent to try and get back to where he currently is and was. He's not going to do that. The guy's got hundreds of millions of dollars, arguably three or four hundred million dollars in the bank. A beautiful family, an awesome uh, path forward in life. Why would he fight somebody that's ranked sixth and potentially even lose to that guy? So last night was huge because if Connor did not win, it's over. And if he did win, it accelerates him back kind of on track to get potentially a uh, championship fight, which I think he would probably go after, or. Uh, a third trilogy, a trilogy fight with Nate Diaz, which I think would sell two million plus pay per views. The best thing that could have happened last night to Connor, with the exception of winning, happened. And a lot of people may not understand this, but Connor didn't technically lose. It's going to show up as a loss, 
but snapping your tibia or lower shin bone you can't obviously fight on that so that happening to Connor leaves a lot of doors open and I think a lot of big doors I don't think he necessarily fights Poirier again I don't think he fights Poirier again I don't think necessarily think he he even fights comes back and fights any UFC fighters with the exception of one. And I think the Nate Diaz fight for probably a 30 to $50 million payout. Uh, I think early reports have him making about $40 million based off of the 1.7 or 1.8 million pay-per-view buys last night. Massive number. Um, I think he's only coming back to fight one guy. I don't see him fighting uh, and losing again to Poirier. I don't think he can beat Poirier unless there's a very lucky punch because Poirier is just the Poirier of old that he beat is a completely different fighter than today and Poirier, <coughs> excuse me, Poirier today just a monster and we've seen it twice so I think Connor's path back now is a Nate Diaz fight and then love it or hate it I'm not a fan of it, but love it or hate it, I think he tries to go after Manny Pacquiao and fight Manny and try to make probably another hundred plus million dollars. And for everybody saying they won't watch that fight, you know you will watch that fight. Like it or hate it, I'm not a huge fan of it. But I think that that's, that's what's next for, for Conor McGregor. Nothing else makes sense. Connor winning the championship does nothing for his brand, does nothing for his career. Obviously, being the championship is a good thing. It's better than not being a champion. But it doesn't do anything for his fighting career. He's already made enough money. He's already achieved enough status. And so what would hurt him more is if he went to fight for the championship and lost. That makes no sense. What, what doesn't make sense is fighting Poye for a fourth time and the same outcome happening that um, it happened in fight number two, which I think would happen. I think Connor, there's a, there's a couple of um, mentor, coach people that I follow through social media. Tim Grover. And he's got a book. I've read portions of it. I just haven't been able, I just haven't purchased it. I am going to purchase it, but I haven't purchased it. Um, and he talks about champions on top and then falling and then finding the path back to becoming a champion. And it's probably one of the hardest things to do as an individual. Once you've achieved the success that you've achieved, coming back and, and then getting knocked off that perch, coming back to the pinnacle of an amazing career and he talks about having that lonely bus ride to hell where you take all your demons all your skeletons and you have to go back into the depths of hell as he calls it and I believe it you have to go and find your reason why you want to go through this journey and become a champion and it's the same thing we can relate to in normal life. If you are in an awesome relationship that ends, sometimes it's impo it feels impossible to come back to, to from that. Sometimes in business, you have something great going and you lose it or something tragic happens and you have to rebuild or start over. It The path back is even harder. For many reasons. But on a level of Connor, it's next to impossible because he's already achieved the absolute most you can achieve. He's a double champion. You can't, like, okay, he could be a three way champion, but he's not gonna be, but he could be. Besides that, he's already achieved it all. He's a double champ, he's fought. Floyd Mayweather, circus fight or not, 
he's created and sold a massive whiskey brand. He's got millions of dollars, probably a month, but millions of dollars a year in sponsorship money. And he's got global recognition and fame. So how do you get motivated to come back from that? And, and it's been talked throughout the media, you know, is he motivated? Is he motivated? I think that first round last night proved he was motivated. But then there's levels to this fight game. And I think Dustin Poirier, on top of that, he proved it even more. So what does Connor do? I think he comes back to fight Nate Diaz. I think he then goes to try and get the Manny Pacquiao fight. He'll probably make 150 to $200 million for the rest of his fighting career. And then I think he goes off into the sunset as a, as a brand ambassador for mixed martial arts. And granted, he doesn't pull any stupid stunts like he's done in the past. He, the world is his oyster. Crazy fight, but it's the best thing, the absolute best thing that could have happened to Conor McGregor last night, with the exception of winning. It's Ken, the classy gentleman. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.